Welcome back to this Guild Wars Let's Play. You're with Sambo and joining us. What the heck is <laughs> What are you doing, Regina J. Lacerta? I'm Good evening fine, to thanks. you. How are you, Sambo? Well, you're I try to just, you know, start this episode off with a bit of a bang. You, are, you, certainly, you certainly did start off with a bang. You, look, folks, she didn't tell me she was going to do that. Uh, prior to recording <laughs> that totally put me off what the heck is that anyway you keep doing that it's not it, hard to put you off no, no it's not i must popper. admit but i wasn't expecting that what is that it's like a it's like a i don't know it's, what it's it is called it's not champagne a popper i got them from nicholas stanford they're like the hunter mystery prizes mystery gift gift gifty things oh from nicholas the hunter he's the one in the secret garden i think is that right yeah, yeah. It was really easy to get. All I had to do was run around as, as a pre serial character, collect the gifts, create another pre serial character, log in as a friend's account, give the gifts from one pre serial character to a friend's account, then give them to the other pre serial character, take that character through the serial, put them in my storage, and there they are. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Okay, you know what? Actually, because, <laughs> yeah, that, that sounds really easy. So I hope, hope all of you guys watching caught that and by the way welcome to <laughs> this crazy already episode do you know what we're going to do regina j lacerta from escalon we well, i'm going to type out those instructions in the doobly doo of this episode <laughs> word for word that you've said there so everyone can see exactly how easy it is for them to get their own champagne <laughs> Champagne poppers. That's the most ridiculous thing. And we will have people saying there are easier ways to do it, but well, that's the yeah. that's the Reggie Lacerta way to to, uh, to do things. And uh, you know what? You're right. That sound absolute. That's just a snitch. That's easy. That's an absolute snap. We'll uh, <laughs> we'll all do that from now on. And because of that explanation, we've reached the end of our episode. It took half an hour. So thanks <laughs> Thank for you joining and us. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> Well, that's the most craziest thing ever. Although, of course, folks, we know that Reggie's crazy when it comes to that stuff. Because how many... Now, look, honestly, think about this. How many wild irises do you reckon you've actually collected in total across oh. all of your characters from that from that area? Like, it must be hundreds. It'd be close to at least 300. Whoa. Do you know what? Most people um, sort of slap themselves on the back when they get 10. I know I do. I can't believe because how many can you remind us how many do you actually need for the uh, you know to actually hand in isn't it a hundred or is it 50 oh it's, it's 50 to get the small equipment pack but randomly see um, Nicholas Stanford's uh, he collects a different thing each day and some days he collects wild iris flowers and the um, most you can hand in out of anything per day is 25 so there's been a couple of days where I've handed him 25 iris flowers to get the um, special prizey things as well. My God. There we go, folks. You've heard it right here on our wonderful uh, Guild Wars Let's Play series. Regina J. Lacerda is certifiably insane. That's what she is. I, I just would not have the patience. And, you know, it's quite funny because um, I saw a tweet from uh now who was it i can't remember who it was now oh i think it was from sendry's uh one of our uh, fellow actually she runs the game latte um uh, series of uh, videos and by the way big hello shout out to you love your most recent one and she was tweeting about her daughter actually was playing a nintendo ds game today and uh, said something about um, she had to get or she couldn't fight the big mo boss monster and so uh, the daughter's father i.e. Uh, Sendry's husband said to the little daughter well basically you got to shut up and grind and I thought that's classic like telling a little kid that you've got to go grind out your levels in order to get up in level to be able to fight a boss but she made a great comment uh, Sendry's did actually not the, not the daughter and she said you know is that actually acceptable in a game these days because the game they're talking about was a recently released uh, I think it was 
a Dragon Quest game. And it's a good point because these days, you know, it used to be the old school thing. I don't know if you remember back in the old days, Reggie, but you'd basically be left out in the world and it was a real bad excuse because developers didn't basically bother putting any content in the game. All they'd do is they'd throw monsters in there and they'd make them ridiculously high levels. So you had to go and fight other monsters in order to level up and grind away and spend days and weeks and months doing it in order to be able to progress through the game. Because, of course, it was a lot cheaper than um, you know putting all of the investment into quest lines and storylines like they do here in Guild Wars so basically it was the opposite of Guild Wars did you ever play any of those grindy old games or any of the um, like Japanese RPGs because didn't you play didn't you play what's that game you played Reggie on the PlayStation uh, the cross between Final Fantasy and Disney I forget oh Kingdom Hearts you played that Kingdom I think, Hearts didn't you? oh my lord talk about grinding it was grinding yes Ah. That was that was. So you basically yeah, and like. It, wasn't, it was it was also going to collect you collecting the coins because you needed coins. I can't even remember that, but you needed a heap of coins throughout the game, and you just had to keep on going out and coming back and waiting for the mobs to respawn to keep on killing just to get these coins up. Ah, yeah. Or was it false hearts or something like that? Yeah, yeah. yeah no, oh. See, Still having that, nightmares about it. Well, look, and, and again, it's like, gosh, you know, is that just being pure laziness? Uh, on behalf of the developers, and I, I honestly believe it was back in the old days. Um, but it's funny um, because in terms of JRPGs, it's kind of a standard, isn't it? It's like, you know, it's like part of the game. If it doesn't have grinding in it, it's not considered a JRPG. But at least Kingdom Hearts was a little bit less grindy than some of the hardcore stuff out there. But um, yeah, well, look, it was it was funny. Kingdom Hearts did have quite a storyline in it, but there was within the storyline there was no continuity. Oh, really? So you go from one world to the next and you just, yeah, it just sort of, the, the storyline didn't really progress. It just sort of jumped. Right, right. It was... And yeah. that's another sign of laziness, if you ask me. I mean, look, I never played Kingdom Hearts 1. I did play Kingdom Hearts 2, and I've played Kingdom Hearts um, Birth by Sleep on the PSP. And the PSP version is actually pretty cool, as are a lot of um, Japanese games on the PSP, because, of course, they're made to be portable, so they kind of eliminate a lot of the grinding on there to sort of try and, you know, make it a bit more accessible, pick up, put down type of game, you know. So I'm kind of glad I played it on there rather than Kingdom Hearts 1, but... Uh, yeah, well, there you go. That's our that's our Reggie. Reggie is our grinder. That's what we're going to call you from now on. I can't believe you've got so many of those. But uh, anyway, I benefit from that, of course, folks, because if you have a look here in my bags, you'll see that I do have a small equipment pack. And, of course, if you remember way back You're when... You're very welcome. Yes, exactly. We have Reggie to thank for that. So all of her grinding actually got us that small equipment pack, which, of course, is five much-needed slots because I'm such a hoarder. Although, Reggie, if you could see my bags right now, you'd be very proud of me because four of them are completely empty. I've done really well. I've gone against my hoarding ways, and I've actually cleaned out my bags. Now, <clears throat> the fact that my backpack is chock-full has nothing to do with it. Um, the rest of them are empty, though, so I'm very proud of myself, So, and I think you will be too. Once you see the video. Anyway, speaking of me, I think um, we were talking before the episode, Reggie, and we've reached an interesting point here in the game because... You want a popper? Um, oh, what's I'll this? I'll give you a popper. Oh, look, she's trading with me. What? Oh, God, her and her bloody poppers. I mean, oh, thank you very much for your, your gift. What the heck? Okay, now, let's go. All right, okay, here we go. Pop, pop, wee! All right. <laughs> it looks... <laughs> On my screen, it looks like we're we're vomiting orange pieces of paper from out the side of our neck. That's what it looks like. Oh, to you me. just you've just lost the fun tonight, Ambo. Come no, on, I, bring it back. Come I, around. It just looks ridiculous. Oh, it's so funny. Well, thank you for the champagne popper. But on to more important. Well, sorry, slightly different things. Not more important than champagne poppers. Um, we've uh, gone through our quest log, and yeah, Reggie. Oh, oh my God! What did you get? <laughs> just every. She's got to be doing something, hasn't she? She's like, no, I can't just stand here. I've got to crack open a firework. I've got to get drunk. I've got to take off a popper. Oh, now she's sitting down. Well, oh, you said like, I can't just stand here. Oh, okay. Do you know what it's like, folks? It's like babysitting. That's what it's like being on this show. It's like, oh, Sarah Fierce, I want to do something. Anyway, we are going to do something. But you were looking through your quest log, Reggie, and you're saying that you've only got one quest in there, and I think it's uh, Elthia's Ashes. Is that right? You've literally just got the one left. Not yeah, even any, not, not even any class quests. 
Nope. Okay, so that's an interesting yeah, I've point. Yeah, I've been vigilant and actually, you know, thought there's no point in me doing class quests in the um, recording because no one can see well, that's my a good point. perspective. No, that's very true. That's nice. So you've gone and done all yours, and that's good. I've still got about four uh, to do, and I think, like we agreed earlier, let's go do them now so they're out of my log. But once they're done, um, you, oh, she, I can see it, she's yawning now. What? There's just no pleasing this woman, seriously. But the thing is, once I've done all of these uh, class quests, we're basically left with Althea's ashes and nothing else. Now, of course, if you folks at home have been watching our last episode, you'll know we failed miserably um, at, what do we have, about six or seven Again. attempts at that, uh, at that quest. <laughs> no, it was shocking, wasn't it? Well, so, at least, at yeah. least if you do your um, class quests, you may actually level up to a point where you're useful. Uh, <laughs> I'll take that as no how can I take that as a compliment that's not a compliment at all anyway yes we're blaming my non-usefulness on the fact that I haven't done enough quests yes that sounds good actually that, that's what we'll blame that on um, but the point is is that once I've done these we've both only got the one quest now that I, I well, just doesn't seem the right mission. there is a mission as well Oh, yeah, good point. There is a mission. Do. But even so, out of the entire Guild Wars, is that all we've got? I mean, I guess after Althea's Ashes, we'll get a, a, a follow-on quest from that, sending us somewhere else, I suppose. But what, what's the idea in the game these days? I mean, are we just supposed to actually adventure? I mean, if we look at our map, you can see, obviously, we're clearly meant to be heading north uh, or over yeah, to the west. Yeah, we've only done a snow. tiny, tiny wee part of the map at we the have. moment. We have. Look at that. So. Zoom out, yeah. But are we just supposed to basically... Um, you know, use our own initiative and run north ourselves, or are there meant to be quests that are actually pulling us through all the time? Because it seems we're um, we're kind of the, running I, thin. I, find, I tend to find that the missions are what pulls you through the storyline and through the map more than the quests themselves. The quests sort of oh. tend to be focused around an area, but the missions will sort of bring you to a new outpost and pull you that little bit further along. Ah, uh, okay. There's From the answer we were looking for. All right, so we definitely need to... here. Yeah, no, no, that's good. We need to do the missions then. But look, you're dead right. Let's um, uh, do my class quests first. So I've got one here called Mesmerizing the Enemy, and basically we have to go south of the sanitarium which is where we are now, south of here, through the ruins of Ashford. And Reggie, you were saying before that Ashford, of course, is where Devona used to be. That's the old little township there. Um, we have to yeah, go south. So now yeah, grim it's ruins. now ruins, isn't it? So south through there, and we have to find a foul gargoyle named Ignis Fenaura that has... Uh, pretending to be a mesmer. Oh, there we go. Reggie's getting our henchies. Of course, we've got those. Um, and I have to destroy him. So that's the first one of our quests. So let's do that. If you're able to uh, let me make sure I've got that selected, of course, in my log, folks. So do you, do you like my, the henchmen I've chosen? Uh, who have we got? Stefan and... Ah! Uh, oh, I'm insulted. I'm wounded. <laughs> Look, she's actually... She's put a healer. A healer henchman in the party. Oh! That's the most insulting thing you could ever do. Oh. I can't believe you've done that. Poo you. Let's hey, go out anyway. I we'll go myself. out and you'll see that I will out heal her. I, this is good because you'll see how valuable I am because I'm a much better healer. Oh, look, she changed it at the last minute. Yep, fine, whatever. Talk about an insult. Now, All right, now we have to go. You have your, your pip. No, so we have to go round here, I think, and round to the south. I'm going to draw on the map. There we go. You can see a bunch of mobs over there. I think that's where we have to go. I really don't know because I've never done this one before. Well, I can't remember doing it. But, ah! There we go. We're already, already attacking. Now, by the way, while I'm thinking about my skills, one of our viewers said to me that what I should do is actually put another skill on here that's called healing circle so hang on or something like that i'm just gonna look at my what is it healing breeze well, you can't change your skills once you're no out in an exploratory i know i know I, area but i just remembered area. i just remembered and they said to get rid of some of my sort of attacking spells i'm trying to remember if maybe it was called healing breeze actually i think it was called healing breeze but see, that's an enchantment. What do you think, Reggie? It says, for 15 seconds, a target ally gains plus 7 health regen. Now, is that actually any use? Okay. <coughs> because I've... Plus 7 actually sounds, you know, more than what you would normally have. Yeah, but... Especially, like, once you start fighting, your health regen really slows down, naturally. Yeah, I suppose. It just seems that... 
uh, an enchantment can be quite painful because it's sucking away my energy. Oh, I suppose it can zap your energy, yeah. Yeah. Look, I'll double check on that next time uh, I'm looking at the comments. I can't remember. I'm pretty sure he said it was that skill, but yeah, I don't know. I'm not I'm not comfortable with enchantments because I just run out of energy so fast. Oh, well. Oh, this area brings back memory. Of course, the farmer that we let die. Remember that? That was so embarrassing. <laughs> Multiple times. Yeah, whoops. But remember, we, we, we decided it was David Tennant's fault that he died. Oh, that's right. It's all Doctor Who's fault. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, so now, David, speaking... you're listening... Speaking of, um... Speaking of personalities, by the way, I saw some horrible news today on the on the, uh, the interwebs. Now, tell me, did you ever watch the show called uh, Spartacus Blood and Sand? Do you know what I'm talking about? I think I've heard of it, but I don't believe I've seen it. All right, it's quite a cool show, basically made by the same people who produced... Um, what's the Lucy Lawless character? I can't remember her name now. Um, Xena! Xena Warrior Princess. Same sort of thing as that, except it's set in Greece and the um, gladiators and all that sort of stuff. And the lead character is actually, uh, a, well, he's born in Wales. He was a very cool guy, actually, really nice guy in real life. Uh, and he was Australian or New Zealand. It was filmed in New Zealand, by the way. Anyway, he's only about 39. He actually passed away today. He died of some crazy lymph node cancer or something. I couldn't, couldn't believe it. The last person in the world you think would would pass away because he's... That he... franchise must be cursed because there's really? a guy who played, um, uh, um, 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 God of the Underworld. What's his name? I'm not sure. Um, yeah, he was a New Zealander, so you should have known, you might have known him. Um, because you know everyone in New Zealand. Yeah, well, because, yeah, um, that's right. Hey, do you know yeah. Bob? Yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, I grew up next to him. Um, yeah, no, but the guy who played God of the Underworld, which it'll come to me like in about the next 20 minutes or so. Right. He passed away sort of, um, uh, 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 sort of, I think it was like near the end of Xena or like a season or two before Xena finished. Oh, really? Mm. That, I and didn't he know was, that. He was sort of mid-30s, I would say. Well, it's incredible, isn't it? It's just, it just really makes you realise, um, you know, how fragile we all are because, of course, this guy... You know, he was all buff and uh, fit and healthy looking and obviously playing a gladiator. Uh, and he'd be the absolute last person you'd think would uh, just drop dead, effectively, with all due respect, by the way. Um, it's just so amazing. And, of course, the other thing that's going on at the moment, and uh, a big uh, hello to everyone from the United States, of course, who is watching this video. As of this filming, uh, we're, what, what date are we filming this, Reggie? We're actually sort of on time for once. I think it's, what is the, it, the 12th the of September? Is it? Mm. Yep, so I think yeah. right now, in the US, of course, it's uh, the anniversary of that most horrific event 10 years ago today that we all know of, and of course that being 9-11. Uh, so obviously our uh, hearts go out to everybody affected by that absolute tragedy and uh, just I, I can't believe Reggie that it's been 10 years already since that's gone by and I'm going to ask you the inevitable question of course which is do you remember what you were doing uh, when you discovered uh, about the tragedy do you actually remember where you were and um, what you were doing yes I do I was actually I'd been watching a documentary on the Japanese invasion on Pearl Harbor. Oh! And I fell asleep on the couch and then woke up to the images of um, just after the first plane had hit the tower. Wow. And it was sort of all. That's I kind found of... it sort of all really weird, sort of watching a documentary on invasion on um, uh, American soil. Yeah. And then it basically happened. Then wake up to see it. Yeah, Re yeah. But it, it's funny because I was actually at the time I was actually working in a women's clothing store. Right. And I went into work the next day, and um, I can't remember what day of the week it was, but whatever the day of the week was, it doesn't didn't tend to be a sort of a busy day of the week. But we actually made more sales on that. I think it was like a Tuesday or Wednesday or something like that. We actually made more sales on that day than on. A Saturday, like you know, uh, one of the busiest days of the week, just because people just kept on coming in wanting to talk. Wow, is that right? 
Yeah, and yeah, and because yeah, I was sort of working in the shop on my own that day, and yeah, it was just I remember it just being a very amazing, draining day because people just kept on coming in all day and wanted to talk, and of course because they were talking, they were buying, and wow, it was just, yeah, very bizarre. And again, it's just hard to believe, isn't it, that that's actually 10 whole years that has gone by. I mean, it just seems like it was yesterday, mm. of course, um, scarring us all forever. Of course, it's going to feel that way. Um, but look, I mean, we, we don't want to harp on about it, obviously, um, about the tragedy itself. But, um, you know, it's something that just in case you're wondering if you're in the US and you're thinking to yourself, oh, probably no one else cares or whatever, it uh, greatly affected all of us. I'll, I'll give you that. I was actually in New Zealand at the time. And, um, you know, I don't think it matters whereabouts in the world you are. Something like that just ripples right through your entire life and uh, uh, obviously extremely tragic. So anyway, um, all of our uh, best wishes to any of you that were affected by that uh, in a more direct way, of course. We hope everything uh, is better now 10 years on, that's for sure. Anyway, let's get off that nasty subject and uh, go back to my quest here, of course, which good old Vessar. Here we go. Ignis was a foul creature. You've done all of Ascalon a great service. There you go. He's talking to me, you see, Reggie, saying, I did Ascalon a great service this day. I must say, you show some... Uh, what? Wait a minute. He's saying I show some potential. I don't have potential. I'm... <laughs> well, look at it. Yeah, whatever, says Reggie. Anyway, get myself some... Uh, I think I get myself a whole bunch of skills here. Oh, I do. I'm going to equip these later because these are all obviously Mesmer skills. So there we go. All right, so that's one down, Reggie. I've got another one here. Uh, what do we got? We've got about seven or eight minutes left in this episode. I've got something called... What's this one? Let me see. Regent Valley. No. Unnatural creatures. No. Oh, here we go. A cure for Relina. And this is now that we have the primary ingredient for Relina's cure. You know what? It's been so long I can't even remember who Relina is. Anyway, I need someone to take it to Master Ranger Nente. He can often be found wandering near what used to be called Green Hills County. Will you help me one last time? Now, Green Hill County. Where's that, Reggie? Name rings a bell. Um, that's the entrance of that was where the big flaming statue was. Oh, 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 okay. So it's up near the breach, up the top there, sort of to the northwest. All right, okay, cool. Let's go. Let's do it. And this is going to be good. We're going to knock at least two of my class quests out of my log. I'm going to be really happy about that. Now, are you sure you don't want a healer in the party, Reggie? You know, he, he, I mean, am I doing okay so far? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that uh, was so well, mean. I've actually got a, I've actually got a heal skill on my bar at the moment, so <laughs> that's even worse. That's saying I don't trust Sambo enough with my life that I need to have a healing skill just in case. That's what that's saying. Shocker. Uh, your words, not mine. Oh, yeah. Whatever. We we all know that's what she. She just has no faith in me. I I have faith in me, you know. <laughs> That's saying something. You have faith in you. Well, I do. On you. I yeah. bet your mummy tells you you're a special boy. <laughs> something, something like that. Gosh, she's being awfully. No I looked. Uh, I seem to have run away from them as well. What are they doing over here? Attacking all these beasties. <clears throat> yeah, of course. Now I've, I've uh, it's it come back to my memory the name of that uh, actor that I was oh. off from Xena. Here we go. Yep. Who was it? Yep, I've just remembered it. Um, <laughs> he played the god Ares. Ares. His okay. name was Kevin. Yeah, his name was Kevin Smith, but not the Kevin Smith from Jay and Silent Bob fame. No, no, no. Wait, wait. Kevin Smith. Hang on. I know exactly who you're talking about. Um, oh, he was you're born kidding. In, in Auckland. Yeah. Is he not? Yeah. Did he die? Um, he died in, I think it was uh, 2000 and 2002. He was 38 years of age. And he actually died in China. I Hang on a sec. I'm just going to have to um, pause our video here because Vista's having a fit. I've just, had, I've just jogged fit. my memory on all this, you see. It's amazing. Hang on. We'll be right back, folks. One moment. All right, and we're back, folks. Good old Vista up to its usual tricks again. And yes, I know, Reggie, I've got to get Windows 7. I, I'm just, seriously, oh, I don't know. had to do a backup. Uh, <laughs> she's so horrible to me. Unfortunately, she's right, though. Um, because, it, it, look, <laughs> well, it is horrible to do a backup. There's so Me, much. But correct. It's so, it would be such a big task, but I have to do it, don't I? It's just, 
honestly, out of the blue, you wouldn't believe it. I mean, this time before filming, I actually went through the task manager and killed a whole bunch of everything. Like, there's barely anything running here. Um, I've got As you were running late on, on me by yeah, doing so. That's right, I was. I was late, late for our recording. Uh, because I was uh, freeing up hard drive space, I was um, killing off processes that we don't need. Oh, look, here we go again! Now we've got four frames per second, Reggie. It's like a slideshow. I just, I, I don't get it. I don't know what, what are you doing, you horrible computer? Seriously. Oh, and now it's come back. Now it's decided to go back to 30 frames per second. So I, I seriously have just no clue. Just turn it into a toaster. Oh, I think it would be more use as a toaster, seriously. I just really, oh, now it's running at 60 frames per second. So... God, I mean, God only knows what it's doing. I wish I knew. What, hey, I, speaking of toasters, the trouble you have with your computer, does, is your toast being to you as well? Does it laugh at you on a regular basis? Listen to her. Gosh. Look, you're supposed to be on my side because I am the victim here. I am the victim of technology. My computer is out to get me. It's conspiring against me. I think I think its name is Hal or something like that. And it keeps saying, I'm sorry, Dave. That's not possible. Sorry, or whatever. Dave. What does he say? You can't do can't that right do that, now. that, Dave. Yeah, exactly. That's my computer. I honestly, I'd love... Look, do you know Open what? Maybe one of you... Doors, Hal. Well, maybe one of you guys um, can help out here. Do you know of a program? I've tried to search for one. Look at it struggling again. Tried to search for one that basically logs what's going on in the background. I've, I haven't had any success. Something that will actually tell me what happens when it starts spazzing out like that. Like what? It's got to be. And there we go again. It's, it's like starting up tr some kind of process. It's not my antivirus. That's all disabled. I've got um, Windows Defender turned off. I've got every single process off except like Explorer <laughs> and Guild Wars. And yet it's still doing this. My disk drive has 500 gig um, space free it's defragmented in fact i defragmented it twice in the last two days seriously vista you are a pain in the butt anyway let's talk to master ranger nente here here we go a cure for relina and oh no this is one that we've done before i don't know if you remember i keep talking to him and it bugs out because i just keep clicking on a cure for relina and nothing happens the um the thing just dismisses, like it just goes oh. away. This is horrible. Man. Now, let's have a look here. Now that, uh-oh, I've just thought of something. What? I'm reading the quest here, and it says, now that we have the primary ingredient for Relina's cure, I need someone to take it to Master Ranger Nente. I'm guessing, I'm guessing, that <gasps> guess what I've done? You've gotten rid of whatever the prime ingredient was. <laughs> I reckon I probably oh have. Oh, I can't believe that, folks. Yeah, oh, well, look. You're such enough enough. Oh, I can't believe it. So we've got frame rate issues. I've lost my ingredient. Reggie's being nasty and trying to put... Yep, that's right. Don't, Reggie's being nasty and trying to put healing NPCs in the party. She's put a healing spell on her hotbar. And to top it all off, I've gone and lost the regent that we need or something. Oh, well, look, there's the timer. It looks like we're out of time. Do you know what, Reggie? What we're going to have to do, I think, uh, in our break before the next episode is perhaps utilize your Guild Wars wiki skills. We'll look up what it is that I need and we'll go find it and see if we can finally come back here and finish off this quest but how can you actually delete a quest item you'd think it would come up and say hey this is a quest item you can't delete it or can does it not work like that in Guild Wars I, I can't say I've noticed um I yeah I don't know if there is sort of um a, a, a thing saying don't delete this because sometimes they'll give you double of what you actually need so remember the devour eggs? We got two devour eggs, but we only needed one to attract the oh, queen yes. worm. Right. So you just dump the second one because you don't need it. Yeah, right. So it's kind of giving you a backup. Maybe whatever I got, I sold. Oh, well, you'd think you wouldn't be able to sell them to a vendor. I guess I must have just trashed it or something. I don't know. We'll look it up on Guild Wars Wiki and see. I'm sure we'll have a bit of a laugh next time. But anyhow, folks, there we go. Uh, once again, our um, condolences and um, utmost respect for um, everyone that helped out in the tragedy 10 years ago. And, of course, uh, rest in peace to, oh, gosh, you know what? I can't remember his name now, but the actor from... Um, the uh, Spartacus Blood and Sand. What's his name? 
Chris, oh no, I can't remember. Anyway, that was very tragic as well. Couldn't believe that. Gosh, that took me by surprise. But hopefully, of course, you guys watching at home are far from troubles. And uh, uh, by the way, Reggie, I had, speaking of troubles, I had the worst sore throat this week. You were lucky because I almost wasn't able to talk in this episode. Can you imagine what a tragedy that would be if I wasn't able to talk? I have no concept of what it would be like if you could not talk. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Oh, she's so nasty to me. Well, on that lovely note, I think it's time for us to go. And we have to go look at Guild Wars Wiki and figure out where I messed up. So anyhow, folks, certainly hope you enjoyed that episode. Hope you'll join us in the next one on behalf of my wonderful self, Sambo, our brilliant healer, Seraphis Heals a Lot, and the decidedly average Regina, Jay Lacerda. It's us saying take care. <laughs> hope you're having a great day. We'll see you next time. And bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.